Let's first remind ourselves how the value of a fraction can vary depending on the numerator and the denominator. If the numerator is smaller than the denominator, the value of the fraction is between 0 and 1, for example, 4 over 200. On the other hand, if the numerator is larger than the denominator, the value of the fraction is greater than 1, for example, 100 over 5. These trends are important to keep in mind when trying to understand the inequality that represents the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. In this video, I'd like to show you the mathematical expression that relates to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle states that you cannot know the position and the speed of an electron with great accuracy simultaneously. You can only know either the position of the electron with great accuracy or the speed of the electron with great accuracy. Once you hone in on either the position or the speed with great accuracy, the other increases in error. I'll begin my explanation by showing you what I think are the key features to this inequality. On the left, there's delta x, which is the amount of error in the position of the electron, and delta v, which is the error in the speed of the electron. On the right, h, Planck's constant, and 4 pi are constants. m is the mass of the object, for example, an electron. It could be any object for the sake of explaining this inequality. I like to explain the inequality by looking at the fraction on the right side of the inequality. Substituting in an estimate for Planck's constant, 10 to the minus 34, and an estimate for the mass of an electron, 10 to the minus 30th kilograms, we find that the fraction on the right is equal to roughly 10 to the minus 4th. In order for this inequality to be true, the product of the error in the velocity and position must be greater than 10 to the minus 4th. Another way of thinking about this is one of the errors, the error in the position or in the speed, must be relatively large compared to the other in order for this inequality to be true. For example, it would seem that the least error we could tolerate in either the measurement of the position or the speed would be 10 to the minus 2 or 0 0.01 in either. And at the atomic subatomic level where things are less than an angstrom in size, 10 to the minus 2 or 0 0.01 in error is not tolerable. If, for example, the error in position was reduced down to 10 to the minus 12, the error in the speed must be enormous in order to satisfy this inequality the error in the speed of the electron would have to be in the order of 10 to the eighth, which is completely unacceptable. Hence, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. You cannot know both the position and the speed of the electron simultaneously with great accuracy. You can only know one or the other with great accuracy. When you start to hone in on one in high accuracy, the other increases in error greatly. Rather than an electron, something we can't see or feel, consider something more tangible, like a one kilogram object. The fraction on the right simplifies to approximately 10 to the minus 34th. That means we could achieve great accuracy or minimal error in the position and the speed of this object. Hence, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle does not apply to objects other than for those at the subatomic level. Next, I'll show you a video that helps support the information I just presented. It is very difficult to measure the air pressure in a tire because the very act of measuring causes some of the air to escape before the measurement can be taken. Thus, the air pressure in the tire changes before it can be measured, making it impossible to measure the exact air pressure in the tire at the exact moment that you wish to measure it. The exact air pressure in the tire is uncertain. The idea that the act of measuring something can alter the measurement itself 
has direct application in the Heisenberg uncertainty principle for subatomic particles. The principle says that the position and the velocity of an object cannot both be measured exactly at the same time. At the size of objects that most people see, such as an automobile, the uncertainty principle has no real application. We can measure the speed and location of a car to our satisfaction, and because of the car's relatively large size, the use of measurement devices such as a speedometer doesn't alter the result. But at the subatomic level, we see that electrons and other tiny particles can easily be altered in velocity or location by measurement itself. Any attempt to measure precisely the velocity of an electron will knock it about in an unpredictable way, simply because of the connection in nature between particles and waves in subatomic dimensions. Every particle has a wave associated with it. For a simple wave, the electron has a well-defined momentum that is determined by the wavelength. This momentum can be used to determine the electron's velocity. However, we cannot determine the position of the electron because it is equally likely to be found at any of the wave's crests or troughs. We can determine the velocity, but not the position. In the complex wave shown here, some of the undulations of the wave are much larger than the others. This type of wave is made by adding together many simple waves with different wavelengths, which means that there are many velocities that are possible. However, the electron is most likely to be found near the position of the high peaks. This electron is localized. We can determine the position, but not the velocity. Hence, the uncertainty.